I'm so excited. It's my annual high school reunion and I've got 15 lifelong friends heading out to the lodge to cut up, have fun, and eat the most delicious food. As soon as they pull up, it's restaurant style salsa and cheese nachos for the beer drinkers. Into a food processor, I throw one 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes. Then I add two 10 ounce cans of diced tomatoes with green chilies. Fourth a cup of diced onion, a whole jalapeno sliced with the seeds and membranes left intact. Then I add a clove of chopped garlic. Then for just a hint of sweetness, a fourth a teaspoon of sugar. Then a fourth a teaspoon of salt. A fourth a teaspoon of cumin, which really adds a nice flavor. The juice of half a lime and half a cup of cilantro. It gives it that unmistakable Mexican flavor. I just pulse it about 10 to 15 times until it gets to just the right consistency. Then the salsa needs to chill for at least an hour so all the flavors will develop. So yummy. Now I've got some last minute kitchen prep. I've got nachos to go with salsa for the beer drinkers. They're so easy, it's just tortilla chips. Sprinkle over plenty of grated Monterey Jack cheese. More tortilla chips, more cheese, more chips, more cheese. Then I do a second platter just like it, except I add some sliced jarred jalapenos to the layers. Then they bake at 350 degrees until the cheese is nice and melted. Gotta get the chips and salsa into bowls. This stuff is so good. It's gonna be gone by the end of the night. The nachos should be ready. Oh, they're perfect. It's the weekend of Pahuska's homecoming, and this afternoon is the big homecoming parade. Now, Lad and the boys are actually riding on floats in the parade, and I'm gonna head in there pretty soon. I'm gonna make the foundation for a snack they can have after the parade, a big batch of chicken nachos. The boys love chicken nachos, and it's just the thing for football season. I've got four chicken breasts and I'm just seasoning them really well with some taco seasoning and some chili powder. Makes them really spicy. And it's great because the taco seasoning has salt in it, so you really don't need to add extra salt at all. I want the chicken to be as flavorful as possible. The sauce is actually gonna come from what I put on the chicken, so I really wanna lay it on thick. I love chili powder because whatever you add it to becomes the most amazing color. And it's nice and spicy. And that's something my family loves. Now I've got a skillet with some olive oil that I've been heating. And I'll just get the chicken in. Now I'm just going to cook the chicken for about 10 minutes total, turning it halfway through. And then I'll move forward with the delicious sauce. The chicken is fully cooked and it looks and smells amazing. I'll just take it out and get it on the board. And I'm gonna make a sauce for the chicken right in the same skillet. I'll just pour in some water, probably a cup and a half to two cups. And to help it along, I'll pour in just a little bit of tomato sauce. And then I'll just whisk this together and let this boil up and come together. I love chicken nachos. Well, I love nachos, period. But chicken nachos are a real treat. Shredded chicken with a delicious sauce on it, smothered in cheese on top of chips. I'm already hungry for them. <laughs> now, the chili powder and the taco seasoning add plenty of spice, but that's never enough for me. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of my favorite hot sauce, just to make sure it's got a nice zip to it. Okay, that's looking good, so I'll let that simmer and heat up. And while that happens, I need to shred all of this chicken. And I'll just use two forks and go right in with it. There is nothing like football season. And really, there's nothing like football season in a small town like Pahuska. It really is important around here. And homecoming weekend is pretty much the height of football season in a small town. The parade is a great way to kick it off. All the cheerleaders are there, the high school football players. So it's really fun to see the whole of Pahuska football represented. Chicken nachos are definitely one of Lad's favorites, so he's gonna be excited when he gets home after the parade. I think shredded chicken is so great on nachos or in any Mexican food. Okay, the sauce looks amazing, it smells divine. 
So I'm just gonna plunk the chicken right into the sauce, and then I'll just simmer it for a few minutes, then I'll let it cool, pop it in the fridge, and I'm gonna head into the parade. Getting that chicken ready will be a big time saver later. Now I'm actually gonna do two versions of nachos, one for the boys and a more embellished one for the girls. They both start exactly the same. A pile of tortilla chips, and then a generous amount of grated cheddar jack cheese. After that comes a layer of the delicious chicken. Then I'll build two more layers just like that. Chips, cheese, chicken, and then I'll end with a final sprinkling of cheese. They go into the oven at 350 until the cheese is nice and melted, and that's where the similarities end. Now the boys will eat the nachos just as they are, but I like to add a few more delicious ingredients. Jarred jalapenos, chopped tomatoes, a sprinkling of black olives, sliced green onions, and a dollop of sour cream. To me, that's what chicken nachos are all about. Perfect potato nachos. We love nachos in this family, but I am going to use potatoes instead of tortilla chips and make potato nachos. So I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes, and I sliced them, drizzled on olive oil, and then sprinkled on salt, pepper, and I'm also using garlic powder just to make sure the potatoes are super seasoned. Oops, had a little fly away. Alrighty, so I got the potatoes all tossed, and I'm gonna divide them between two sheet pans, just so the potatoes have a chance to get fully cooked and get a little bit brown. So to bake the potatoes, I'm putting them into a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes, and then I'll rotate the pans, turn the potatoes to the other side, and finish them off for another 15 or so. Look at how beautiful these are. Oh, they're so golden and tender. So I'm gonna take one pan and pile them on top of the first pan. So of course, nachos or potato nachos have to have a lot of cheese. This is actually cheddar jack, but you could do pepper jack. Really, any cheese will work. And I have some beautiful cooked bacon that I chopped really fine. And I was really careful not to overcook the bacon because this is gonna go back in the oven and I wanna give the bacon a little bit of room to keep cooking. So before I finish off the nachos, I'm gonna put these back in the oven for about five minutes, just long enough for the cheese to melt. If you have never seen potato nachos straight out of the oven, here they are. How incredible do these look? And honestly, they're perfect as they are. But I have some really great toppings that are gonna send them over the top. So I have pickled red onions. They're just basically easy pickled red onions. Green onions, really generous sprinkle. And then this is optional. I like to do a dollop of sour cream because I'm a big fan of sour cream when it comes to regular nachos. Oh my gosh. By the way, this is a single serving. Just kidding, I think. <laughs> Salsa, always a good choice, absolutely glorious. I am going to try one because it just looks too good. Get a little sour cream, a little salsa. Mmm. This is my favorite so far. If this were a grade in school, I'd have to give it an A plus. Whoa. You can't get any better than nacho cheese casserole. It's one of those dinners that completely disappears. There is never a crumb left. I'm starting with the sauce for the casserole. I added some vegetable oil to a skillet, and I'm adding some flour. I'm just gonna make a little bit of a roux, and that'll help it be a nice, thick, rich sauce. I'm gonna whisk it just for a minute until the roux starts to turn a light golden brown. So now I'll add some liquid, three cups of low sodium chicken broth. And this was so hot that that roux is already gonna thicken this liquid up. I'm making two casseroles out of this deal, so I wanna have a lot of sauce. 
Now to this mixture, I'm gonna add two cans of enchilada sauce. One of them is just a standard can, 10 ounces, and the other one is a large can, 28 ounces. And now I'll stir this up. And I wanna give it a little seasoning with half a teaspoon of ground cumin. I don't want it to be too strong, and the flavor of the chips I'm gonna use is very strong. So just a little cumin is all I need. Okay, I need to give the sauce a little time to heat and thicken up, so I'll add the meat to a separate skillet. I've got three pounds of ground beef, and it goes right in, along with some finely diced onion. Of course, some minced garlic has to show up, and I'll break this all up. I just need to cook the meat until it's brown, and I'm gonna make a cheese mixture for the casserole. Very simple, just a bunch of grated sharp cheddar, and I'm also using some pepper jack cheese. The sauce is done. So I am gonna pour the sauce into the meat. Just make it all one big mixture. First, I'll put a layer of crushed nacho chips into the pans. They each get a layer of the beef mixture. Then comes the cheese, more chips, more beef, even more cheese, a final layer of chips, and, you guessed it, more cheese. Now this one's for dinner tonight. Let me tell you how it's gonna play out. I'll cover the pan in foil and bake it at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. Then I'll take off the foil, give it another 15 minutes, then take it out and top it with shredded romaine lettuce, diced Roma tomatoes, some sour cream, sliced black olives, and sliced green onions. Then with all the fixins piled on top, I'll spoon out a big helping and put it on a plate for dinner. How good is that gonna be? And what about this pan, you ask? I'm gonna cover it with foil and I'll pop it in the freezer and it'll be all ready for another day. Citrus shrimp nachos. These are nothing like regular Tex-Mex nachos. They're cool and crisp and flavorful, and I love them. I've got some cooked shrimp that I bought at the supermarket. The tails were off, they were already peeled. Now that is my kind of cooking right there. I'm just chopping them into little bits, and that looks great. So this goes into a bowl. I'm gonna marinate the shrimp, and it's gonna make it super flavorful for the nachos. Now, of course, I've got to add a bunch of other stuff. I have some diced jicama, which is like a Mexican turnip. I don't use jicama very often, but it is so cool and refreshing and crisp. I love it. I'm also adding some diced mango. You can use fresh mango or you can buy the mango in jars. It's a little bit sweeter. I really like that mango, especially for mango margaritas. I'm adding some sliced green onion and jarred pimento, super simple ingredient. You can also use diced red bell pepper and then some cilantro leaves. All right, so that's the shrimp mixture. Now I'm gonna make the marinade, which is really easy. It's just half a cup of olive oil. And to the olive oil, I'll add a couple of tablespoons of honey and then two citrus juices, some orange juice, and lime juice. I also zested the lime before I juiced it with salt and pepper, and then green hot sauce, sometimes called jalapeno hot sauce. I'll pour this over the shrimp. I may not need all of this, so I can save what's left over for a salad tomorrow. It's a really nice dressing. Oh, it's so pretty. So I'll cover the bowl, and I'll get this into the fridge, and it'll marinate slowly until party time when I assemble the nachos. So now I'll assemble the citrus shrimp nachos. I have some really nice tortilla chips. They're round. They're pretty substantial. You don't want to get a super thin chip. And I'm going to give this beautiful shrimp mixture a stir. So I'll get a spoonful of the mixture 
and pile it right on top. Then I have some crumbled cotija cheese, which is sort of a Mexican version of feta cheese. And I'll add a few crumbles. And then I'll grab a little cilantro leaf and put it on top. Gorgeous. So gorgeous, in fact. I'm going to make a whole platter of these. Fajita nachos are just like fajitas, but in nacho form. So I've been prepping the veggies. I've just got onions and two colors of bell pepper. I'll let those sit. I've got a big, beautiful beef flank steak, and it's been marinating. Bryce and I won't need the whole thing. The great thing is it stays really good in the fridge, so I can use it for all sorts of things later. Okay, this is a really hot grill and it's gonna cook about four minutes a side. And while it does, I'll tell you what this delicious marinade is all about. I poured olive oil into the food processor, added lime juice, whole canned chipotle peppers with a little bit of the sauce, and a handful of cilantro. Gave it a quick blend, and the marinade was ready. I poured it over the flank steak, sealed the bag, smushed it around to make sure it was coated, and put it in the fridge for 24 hours. When it comes to fajitas, it does not get any tastier than this marinade. I've made it for years. Okay, gonna turn this beautiful flank steak. Look at those grill marks. Okay, the flank steak needs to keep cooking, so I'll start cooking the veggies. I've got a separate skillet. I'll drizzle in some olive oil. I'm gonna throw in the onions and peppers. You can use green bell pepper, orange bell pepper. You can throw some poblanos or jalapenos into the mix. I wanna season up the veggies just a little bit, so I have a jar of taco seasoning ready to go. And salt and pepper, that's pretty much all the veggies need. I'm gonna keep things simple for Bryce and me. This steak is ready to come off the grill pan. It smells so good. That marinade has a little bit of spice to it, so it's gonna be just right for nachos. Now I've got chips. I like to use a little bit more of an authentic tortilla chip when I make nachos, just so they're nice and sturdy and hold together. Now I'm gonna put the veggies on first, and they're all done. They have some great color. Okay, that's a good amount of veggies. I've got two kinds of cheese, grated sharp cheddar and grated Monterey Jack. Truth be told, I could make nachos with just Jack cheese. It is the best cheese to use for nachos or quesadillas, anything where you want the cheese to be really melty and nice. I would have just a few more veggies on top, just so you see that gorgeous color. Okay, now to melt all this cheese, I'm gonna put the plate right into a 350 degree oven for just two or three minutes. I'm gonna put the steak on after the nachos come out of the oven. That way it won't lose its beautiful medium rareness. <laughs> oh yeah. Please be careful, sir. The platter is very hot. Here, grab some steak and help me put it on. Grab a handful. That looks good enough to eat. All right, let's put some toppings on. Sounds good. What do you like? Here's pico de gallo. I like all things that are good. <laughs> Here I go. Mmm. It's nice just to share nachos with two people. All right, I don't know if you have heard of tachos before, Alex, have you? I have not. Tachos are the new nachos. But instead of tortilla chips, they are made with tots. Oh. Store-bought frozen tots. I mean, you've seen them a million times, but I use them as the basis for lots of other delicious toppings. So I'm gonna make breakfast tachos. Let me tell you something, guys. These are gonna change your life. They're gonna change the way you look at breakfast forever, unless you eat these for lunch, and then they'll change the way you look at lunch forever. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs>
So basically I baked the tots according to the package directions and they're nice and crisp. And what I'm attempting to do, <laughs> but not doing a very good job, is mound them kind of in the center. So they're sort of gathered up. That's perfect. So now I'm gonna top with Monterey Jack cheese. And basically you wanna just cover the tots completely, just like you would nachos if these were tortilla chips. I have made like buffalo chicken tachos. I've made like pepperoni pizza tachos. I mean, what's the world coming to? Bacon. Ooh. This is the first little hint of breakfast. All over the cheese. And then get a load of this. You're not gonna believe what I'm about to do. Jalapeno slices. <laughs> oh gosh, and you wanna get it on the cheese so when the cheese melts, it kind of just becomes one with it. Oh, I love pickled jalapenos. Mm -hmm. And watch this, there's a little juice. Watch. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now you're talking. Green onions sliced. Might as well get these going too. And then I'm gonna put these back in the oven. So come on, Alex. Ooh. I would just eat these with a fork as they are right now. So I'm gonna put them back into the oven while I get the eggs ready. So let's go do that. So I'm gonna make sunny side up eggs because they look beautiful and because then you'll have some egg yolk to kind of crack all over the nachos. So I've got a skillet with a little bit of vegetable oil and watch this Alex. I'm just gonna crack four eggs right into the oil. The pan is not too, too hot because I wanna kind of cook them slowly just until the whites set, but while the yolks are still really runny. You can do butter if you want to. Vegetable oil is kind of a little bit more of a classic way to do sunny side up eggs. They turn out really clean and beautiful. All right. Ah, and I didn't crack a yolk. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. So I'll season them with salt and pepper. Sorry, Alex, <laughs> I got in your way there. Salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna kind of cook these over medium heat until the whites are totally set and the yolks are just barely starting to set. Don't leave me, this is gonna go fast. Okay, Alex, take a look at these eggs. You see how the whites are totally set? Mm -hmm. There's just a tiny bit that isn't. So I'm gonna turn the heat down and I'm gonna go back to the oven. Okay, don't. Excuse me, Spooky. sir. Sit. Hey, sit. Good boy, stay. Stay. <laughs> Duke is gonna help me get the tachos out of the oven. <laughs> you ready, Dukey? Oh, these look so good. Oh, Alex, look. <laughs> okay, so come in here and get a load of this. Oh, cheese, baby. bacon, jalapenos. Honestly, I could just dive in right now. But there's more to add. Guacamole. So, to my tachos, I will add guacamole just here and there and everywhere. You can also serve this on the side if you prefer. I just like it to be a big pile of just sin and craziness. Pico de gallo. Sprinkle, I love it. Uh, sour cream, sour cream. <laughs> Look, oh, I'm so happy right now. This looks <laughs> splendid. Okay, so then look at these gorgeous eggs. Mmm. Mm. And you can have like a paper towel nearby and just to dab all that, <laughs> dab the oil off. <laughs> oh, okay, so watch this, Alex, ready? Oh, oh <laughs> slippery. Oh gosh. <laughs> Ginger didn't see that. I just tap it a little bit to get the excess oil off. What about right on top? But how pretty is this? Wow. And put it on the table, serve some guests. Looks amazing. Serve your hungry guests. That's gonna be me at your house someday. That's right. make this for I'm, you. I'm actually investing in my future by <laughs> showing you guys how to make all of these. It's true. Okay, and the last egg. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And just to send things over the edge, 
some fresh cilantro. I don't like to chop cilantro. It's, it should be celebrated. It's natural beauty, natural leaf. What do you think, guys? It looks amazing. I think so good. it needs more pico. Yes, I agree. <laughs> it needs more of that beautiful red. Breakfast tachos. I don't know about you, but this may be my new favorite thing. Dookie. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to make a lightened up version of nachos. So I've got six corn tortillas and I just cut them into very small little wedges. And I'm gonna put them into a bowl, kind of break them apart, and then just spray them with olive oil cooking spray. This is the best way to kind of get a really light coating of oil on the tortillas. So after the oil, I'm gonna season the tortillas it's ranch dressing mix, what? ranch seasoning. Wow. So then I have a well-oiled baking sheet and I'll sprinkle the chips on the sheet and spread them out into a single layer. And these are gonna be baked because normal nachos are made with tortilla chips, which are unapologetically fried and that's why they're so darn amazing. But that doesn't mean that these won't be amazing too. They're just, they'll just be kind of a different Kind of amazing. Okay, so let's go put these in the oven, Alex. So I've got the oven on 425 degrees and I'm gonna put these in for 10 minutes and I'm gonna stir them halfway just to make sure they're getting evenly crisped. All right, Alex, look, look at the chips. Wow, they look like real chips. They do and they taste like real chips covered in ranch seasoning, that is. So I let the chips cool slightly, and I'm gonna top them and turn them into nachos. So I've got some canned corn. I drained it really well so it wouldn't be very liquidy. These are basically just loaded nachos. You wanna make this for like a football watching party or just like a Wednesday night. <laughs> Whatever's more appropriate. Sounds more my speed. Black beans, and I drained them and rinsed them and made sure to drain off most of the liquid. And now these nachos do have cheese because you basically can't make nachos without cheese, but not very much. For me, this is like a drop in the bucket of the amount of cheese I usually use for nachos, but it's pepper jack, which means it's a little bit more flavorful than a lot of cheeses. And it's really creamy, and if you don't just completely cover everything with cheese, you can celebrate the ingredients that are underneath. So I've also got some jarred jalapenos. And then these go back into the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt. So let's get them in there. Yum. Okay, that's not gonna take long, so let's go over here. And you've gotta have some kind of salsa to serve with nachos. So I'm gonna make just a really simple avocado salsa. So mm. I've got finely chopped tomatoes and finely chopped red onion. Yum. And then lots of lime juice. Mmm. It reminds me, pico de gallo is something that I've got to start making more and more. I used to make it all the time. It used to be a condiment in our house. Yeah, you used to make pico a lot. All the time, and it just kind of fell off my radar. Poor lad. <laughs> I'm sure he wakes up some nights thinking, where did the pico de gallo go? <laughs> Little bit of cumin. Mmm a little bit of salt and pepper. And then what is something that all pico de gallo or salsa has to have? Cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> Cilantro and a lot. Whenever I started kind of making salsa and pico de gallo, it took me a long time to realize you basically have to add as much cilantro as you have tomatoes and other ingredients. Okay, so in goes the cilantro. And then this is avocado salsa, so I'm gonna add some chopped avocado. Yum. It's just barely ripe, so it's not mushy and like fall apart guacamole avocado. Okay, so that's the salsa. I'll bet the cheese has melted on the nachos. It's where the magic happens. It sure enough is, Alex. Let's look. Oh, wow. oh hi. Mmm. Yummy. I mean, gosh. 
So you can serve these nachos just right on the sheet pan, which is what I'm gonna do, but you can also serve it with the salsa on the side, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna sprinkle the salsa all over the nachos. By no means am I saying you could eat a whole pan of these and consider it light, but these are definitely lighter than the normal nachos we see around these parts, let me tell you. True. Mine would have probably like four times the cheese. <laughs> I know, exactly. You are your mother's daughter. Okay, lightened up nachos, guys. What do you think? Looks so good. So good. I am going to make these for the next big game on TV. I'm gonna make these next week. I'm gonna eat these now. And I am not ashamed. Mm. Good. Buffalo chicken tachos. I've just got frozen tots and I'm sprinkling on some chili powder and some cumin. Sprinkle that over. And then I'll give these a toss. Frozen tots are pretty darn good as they are, but adding the chili powder and cumin really kind of elevates them. Okay, they are all coated. So I'm gonna bake these in the oven. They're gonna go onto a rimmed sheet pan. Now I'm gonna bake these in a 450 degree oven for about 35 minutes. So I'm gonna move forward with the buffalo chicken mixture. I just added some chicken breast that I cut into chunks and I'm adding plenty of salt and pepper. I just had a little butter in the skillet and I'm gonna start browning this before I move forward with the sauce. This kind of recipe is so much fun because you can serve it to teenagers after school if they have friends over after a football game, it's perfect for that. Okay, the chicken is starting to brown, so I have some more things to add to the skillet. I've got some finely minced garlic and some sliced celery, which kind of ties into the buffalo chicken theme, and some sliced scallions. Okay. When Alex and Paige left for college, I swore things would never feel normal again. But we've kind of gotten a little rhythm when the girls come home to visit, it's absolutely wonderful. And then when they go back, we settle right back into the man cave routine. <laughs> so now for the buffalo angle, I've got Louisiana hot sauce, and I'm gonna pour in a whole bottle. This is a great, quick way to make buffalo chicken. Of course, the classic is buffalo chicken wings. That takes a little more time. You have to fry the wings and then simmer them in the sauce. Okay, I think that chicken is just about done. And I think the tots are ready to come out of the oven. They should be golden and crisp. And yes, they are. While I'm here, I'm gonna turn the broiler on. So that'll be ready. So now I'm gonna assemble the tachos, but I wanna get the tots into sort of a group in the middle. You basically wanna make a pile. So first I'm gonna put on just a little bit of cheese. I'm using pepper jack, but you can use plain jack, sharp cheddar, a mix of Colby jack, and then this very saucy, spicy, tasty chicken goes on. I'm gonna grab a bigger spoon. <laughs> okay, now you wanna get a bunch of chicken on top, but you also wanna get sauce all over the mix. It'll kind of seep down into those crevices. <laughs> and then the rest of the cheese goes on. And this is going to be such a scrumptious pile of food right here. Okay, now the pan goes under the broiler just for two or three minutes until the cheese is melted and bubbly. This is not a dish you want to make ahead of time. You make it right before you serve it. Now I'm gonna make a blue cheese ranch dressing to go with the tachos. You won't believe how easy this is. I've just got some prepared ranch and I'm spiking it with just a little bit of blue cheese. I'll give it a stir and add a little pepper and a little bit of salt. Ranch is basically a way of life with my teenagers. They eat ranch with pizza, chicken nuggets, french fries, I like to spike it with just a little bit of blue cheese to keep it consistent with buffalo chicken. Okay, that's the dressing. Pretty sure that cheese is melted by now. Let me take a look. Oh, yes. 
It all makes sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, what a fun dish. I love it. Now, of course, you can serve little ramekins with the ranch in it, but I kind of like to just go for it <laughs> and drizzle it on all over. It kind of makes a mess, but that never bothers me. <laughs> now, to garnish, I like to sprinkle on some celery leaves. So pretty and keeps driving home that buffalo chicken point. And then a whole bunch of green onions. Well, if you've never seen buffalo chicken tachos before in your life, that just changed. Here they are.